I don't know how, how or know how I can make contact with the author who posted this experience without the famous Plankton Gets Served episode from Spongebob. But if he somehow manages to post my experience, I am willing to share. I have the information he might be interested in. Plankton Got Served wasn't the only episode that got changed. Puffabled, aka the motion doofus in the later episode, was changed as well. I was around the age of 12 at this time, and he heard of this from his friends about his children being picked on to watch Nick's cartoons before they got aired. Scattered throughout the United States in various buildings that were secretly belonged to Nickelodeon, a few are taken to which they watch cartoons. If you found one of these buildings, you wouldn't even know it was associated with the studio because of the building's exterior look generic and even it looks like a clummy place to work. As luck would have it, I lived close to one of these places. That's why I hopped to hope to, to get chosen, despite being the age of 12. I wanted to get more info what was seen over there, so I spoke to random kids if they were lucky enough to walk into the headquarters. Most responses result in looking strangely. Uh, what are you talking about? Nope, never heard of it. While my quest appeared to be a, be a food tiller, of course, I eventually found some of the lucky kids. One refused to tell me what he watched over there, because it was conventional, but the other kid, around below my age, agreed to talk to me about the experience which he had was very disappointing. He would tell me about an odd episode of Fairy Odd Parents about Timmy Turner having to deal with growing up and eventually losing Cosmo and Wanda. During the middle of the episode, someone rushed over into the viewing room immediately and ejected the tape. He told me some of the viewers accidentally put the wrong tape in and that was the episode that was still in development. When he gets another tape and puts it in, it turns out that most of the episodes on the tape were already aired. Then when the rerun ended, a lot of children became restless. The man who had appeared to reject the eject the tape first thought them to be episodes that they've already watched that weren't aired in a while. They were looking to make sure that it would be alright to air them again. Everyone went home without seeing a single new episode. I tried walking around the whole neighborhood and headed home, but two weeks later I was in for an unexpected surprise. When I got up, a stranger was sitting on the table with my parents and he was a young man I've never seen before. I asked who this person was and it turns out to be a stranger was one of the workers from those headquarters. This had to be a coincidence. Unless that he have somehow found out what was going around and asked the others about their experience. As cliche as this may sound, I invite, was invited to watch cartoons and I didn't complain. I was pretty excited about this. The next day I was dropped off and saw a bunch of other children being led into the tall business structure building. My parents stayed in their car and waved to me as I was also led in. They knew that I was mature enough to handle myself. I followed the group and noticed that the lack of younger children. This was surprising because most people around my age here, the interior didn't lock or look any better. They were led to a few upstairs until we reached to our destination. The room was huge but mostly empty. Rows of chairs were lined up if the room was being used for a wedding. We all picked a seat and sat down. After waiting for about 10 minutes, someone entered the room and he told us about a big surprise guest that was there. Derek and Vrajan entered the, and walked in afterwards. I didn't know who this person was at first, but Derek was one of the writers for the newer Spongebob episodes. I used to watch his show a lot and it was a decent show at the time, when I when it was first being aired, however, I moved on from it and after the second season ended. Derek greeted and told us that he was working on making one of the more episodes of SpongeBob. He then told us that he just finished touches on one of the episodes that was going to get a sneak peek. He mentioned how the episode was going to bring major changes to the show, and he said it was going to introduce a new villain besides Plankton. He kept gloating on how much he enjoyed writing for the show before getting the disc inserted into the player. The show's opening plays out with the title card, Puff Abled, pops out. The usual cheery music plays during this. The episode starts with the yellow sponge heading to a boating school after he annoys Squibber a little bit. The yellow sponge quickly leaves and arrives at school. He merely finds Mrs. Puff sitting in a vehicle. As he gets to the, his vehicle, Mrs. Puff doesn't even 
even look at thrilled about this. SpongeBob begins bumping, bumping into other cars, which causes Mrs. Puff to inflate. She constantly pleads with SpongeBob to stop driving, but is ignored. Without any reason, SpongeBob crashes into a lighthouse while Mrs. Puff is completely inflated. The next scene shows Mrs. Puff deflated, and she is on the hospital bed. SpongeBob was with a doctor who explains to Mrs. Puff that her inflation sack is permanently damaged and that she'll be never able to inflate again afterwards. The most disgusting thing happens. SpongeBob makes a cruel joke about this, and I felt a little upset at this, and this even made it worse when I hear Derek chuckle at this joke he was kept in for the final cut. This is when the difference between Puffabled and Demolish and Doofus comes into play. In the version that everyone knows about, Mrs. Puff attacks Spongebob but is quickly tranquilized by the doctor. Afterwards, she tries to get rid of Spongebob by tricking him into entering the car derby, which of course backfires on her. But in the version that I was watching, Miss Puff began to cry. While Miss Puff started sobbing, Spongebob even says more horrid things I don't even want to remember. All these other jokes on he, he, jokes he made were very disrespectful for those who are really crippled. She doesn't get out of her car quickly to attack Spongebob. The doctor just tells the yellow sponge that visiting hours were over and he leaves. The next scene, which shows Mrs. Puff lying there di distressed, a couple of flashbacks play out as shows all the times where Spongebob had harmed Mrs. Puff. All these flashbacks were from previous seasons, up to the very first episode that Miss Puff was featured in. When then Miss Puff looks at the viewer as if to break the fourth wall, and begins changing her expression to a creepy smile. I heard one of the children sobbing and getting rushed out of the room. The rest of us watched Spongebob and relaxed on his bed. As Spongebob does that, he begins snoring as shadow rises above him, and when lightning strikes, it is revealed to be Mrs. Puff. Now Spongebob wakes up to the lightning and notices the intruder. Spongebob doesn't recognize his teacher and screams and makes a run for it. Spongebob makes a run for it to the first-person perspective, the whole house is completely dark as he runs blindly through the darkness. You could barely see anything. Eventually it cuts to the perspective, and Spongebob finally finds a lamp and as he turns it on. Miss Puff is standing next to him with a knife. Thank you for turning that on, she says. As Miss Puff knocks Spongebob to the floor and holds the knife straight up to his nose, just when the pu pufferfish was go about to get vengeance, Gary intervenes and attacks her. She picks up the snail and throws him against the wall, which causes his shell to shatter. Spongebob believes that his pet is dead and cries, but it's still his hysterical crying as Mrs. Puff tells him to shut up. The pufferfish begins to describe the amount of pain she's going through to cause him. She describes of how horrible it all was for him in detail, and now this is his punishment that he deserves. Before Miss Puff begins inflinging harm to his Spongebob, she is knocked out by a tranquilizer. It then turns out that Gary called the hospital and afterwards and knocks onto the wall, but a group of doctors carry Mrs. Puff away in a straitjacket. SpongeBob looks at Gary and cries happily that he's okay. SpongeBob hugs his pet in tears until it goes to the final scene. With Mrs. Puff now in the asylum, still deflated, she looks at the viewer like she did earlier and talks to us as if we were in the same room. SpongeBob is still out there. Until I punish him. I'll never be at ease. Next time, he won't be so lucky. She laughed a horrifying manner as the episode finally come to a close. When it was over, I noticed that a few people left in the room, and it turns out that it was one of the few that I was brave enough before to finish the episode. Someone I didn't know walked up to the DVD player and took the disc out. I didn't have the courage to ask if any of the writers of this episode were out of their minds, but they looked furious. We quickly left the room, and when we did, we heard the sound of the disc getting smashed, which was possibly the only evidence of the episode's existence. He left as quickly as he could, as my parents were still waiting for me. As my family drove home, I stared into blank space, and I didn't tell any of them of what happened, and hid everything about it. SpongeBob is a complete monster. Is he really supposed to be a good guy? This showed that he has no remorse over anyone, never thinks about these things that he causes. Unlike the edited episode what you've seen, Mrs. Puff doesn't inflate again, and the whole thing with her getting deflated was meant to build up some coming of her becoming a new villain. Thankfully that was shot down and I found myself wishing bad karma on Spongebob. That 
it doesn't make uh, me a horrible person, was feeling bad for Mrs. Puffin mistake. Thanks to what I've read, read, I know that I'm not the only one who were to see something like this. I feel a lot better now, and this is why I'm sharing this experience. I don't know if there's any other episodes that are edited out there, but I told myself that I would never go anywhere near those buildings again. And that, my little pretties, was um, Spongebob uh, Puffable, a Spongebob Lost Episode Creepypasta, written by K. Rock on. on. Um, my final thoughts on the story? Well, I kind of remember, you know, that uh, Shadow Reader narrated this one back in 2000 and, um, well, 2019 or something like that. It was sometime around on his old channel before it got terminated, but he did re-upload um, this story. He did re-upload his narration on it, and it's on, um, it's on, well, the, it's on the, in the, what was it? Oh yeah, it's on the Some Ordinary Gamers Wiki. If you um, if you want to know, it's on Some Ordinary Gamers Wiki. That's exactly where I've um, came in, you know, to take a look at. Now, I know I kind of narr I didn't narrate this back then, but I decided to go ahead and actually review this episode. Now, I haven't watched Spon any of the older SpongeBob episodes in a while, so. There's definitely that. I haven't read any of the older, well, watched any of the older Spongebob episodes in a long time. So since I'm narrating this not one now, I was kind of hesitant to narrate this at first because I've been not sure when I would have time for it to do so. But finally, I do. Now let's get out with the episode. Well, for one thing, I really do like that this is actually a, um alternative episode to the original Puffabled um, story. I mean, it's a really good alternative um, episode for Spongebob. I mean, it really worked out well, because, like, I mean, you know, I can honestly see how crazy, um, what was it? Oh, yeah, how crazy um, Mrs. Puff could go like this towards, um, well, Spongebob. Like, I mean, I've seen this episode maybe once or twice. I can't remember, because it's been quite a long time. But, you know, Mrs. Puff going all nuts all of a sudden, you know, after being deflated because it's all because of Spongebob. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I remember Spongebob, you know, does a lot of crazy things in this, in, you know, these episodes. And same with, you know, everyone else in the Spongebob, you know, series. I mean, I like the dark concept of this story. Like, it's really messed up that, that Mrs. Puff would actually sit there and, you know want to kill Spongebob. I mean, I know I can't really exactly see this, but that's kind of out of character for, you know, um, Spongebob, you know, well, Mrs. Puff to actually sit there and do this. Like, this is at, I know this is like out of character for um, Spongebob, well, for Mrs. Puff to sit there and do that. Now, Dalmatian Doofus, I think I might have saw that episode once. I don't remember because... I haven't seen that episode in, like, a really long time. So, that is, um, definitely that. Like, seeing the way, like, um, Miss, um, Mrs. Puff wanting to kill Spongebob. I mean, that concept is pretty dark, in my opinion. I know, you know, Spongebob has, you know, messed up episodes here and there. This one, in this creepypasta manner, actually manages to incorporate that very well. Like, Spon like, Mrs. Puff is not saying they're having hyperlistic gore or blood or eyes or anything like that. Thank God it didn't really sound cliche, you know, Mrs. Puff wanting to get revenge or anything like that. So that's definitely a plus right there. But I also really like the fact that, you know, um, this episode, you know, is portraying um, Mrs. Puff to be a villain besides Plankton. We all know Plankton is, you know, the main villain of uh, Spongebob. Like, um, I've seen, you know, Spongebob, you know, having only one villain. Well, Plankton. But seeing Mrs. Puff becoming a, a villain, I honestly could see this being the case. Because, you know, a lot of Spongebob creepypasta... Well, a lot of Spongebob um, episodes, you know, in the show itself, there's not really many uh, villains, quote-unquote. Like, I mean, there's not really many villains in Spongebob. I'm gonna be honest. Besides, Plankton's, like, pretty much the only one. But seeing Mrs. Puff becoming a villain or something, 
I could honestly see that being the case. Like, uh, if you've watched, you know, Plankton and, you know, episodes in Spongebob, you could definitely see how messed up, you know, Plankton really is when it comes to, you know, these. I could honestly see, you know, um, Spongebob, well, having another villain, Mrs. Puff, for example. I mean, I could honestly see that being the case. Like, if this episode were to air, that would be a very interesting story. I would definitely really enjoy it. It would definitely um, be really cool to see, you know, um, Mrs. Puff becoming a villain. And, you know, especially after she becomes disabled in this story. I mean, I could honestly see that being the case. I mean, I've watched um, a couple Spongebob episodes, you know, that Plankton was the villain. I mean, seeing Mrs. Puff as a villain, that would be definitely really interesting to see. Like, I can honestly see Mrs. Puff becoming, like, a villain if this actual episode were to air. That would be something to see. Another thing I can really say is that I really like how the grammar is well done, the sentence structuring, the storyline. I mean, the storyline is very believable. Like, I really personally liked how this story went out. Especially with, you know, Mrs. Puff becoming a villain. I think there might have been other villains in Spongebob, but I really don't know because there's not really many villains in Spongebob. But if you guys want to make a mentions of, you know, villains that are in Spongebob that I might have, you know, not mentioned or something, feel free to leave me now in the comments below because I would like to hear that. Now, about Plankton being a villain, I mean, he's an anti-villain at times. Like, I've seen a few episodes of Spongebob where... Miss, where Plankton's like a good guy and then all that. I think he's an anti-villain more or less. But yet again, I haven't watched Spongebob in like a while. So yeah, there's definitely that. I mean, with all due sincerity, if I could think of something that I didn't really particularly care for, not really. I can't seem to find anything, you know, that I didn't like about this story. Like, I mean, the cliches were incorporated in a very well manner. Like, it's not sitting there and, you know, um, adding, you know, a bunch of cliches just for the sake of throwing it in there. Not like most creepypastas tend to do. This one actually manages to incorporate a few cliches that were mentioned in it in a really well manner. It's not set, slapped on there for the sake of doing so. So, I guess um, I'm going to wrap up the review. There's nothing really else I can much say, but I'm going to say this. Like I'm going to say right now, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me... That's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions to Garcia's creepypastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. Now, my final rating of the story is a 10 out of 10. It's a very good creepypasta. It was really enjoyable. Um, I like this alternative ending or version of the Puffabled episode of SpongeBob. I mean, it's a dark concept, yes, but for whatever reason, I really like how this went out. It actually had a pretty good, you know, storyline. I really do find this one to be, you know, quite enjoyable. I still really do find this one to have a very good concept for what this story really is. I mean, it's not t a terrible story. It's a really good um one for that. I mean, you know, I can honestly see Mrs. Puff being like a new villain, perhaps. Like, I really have to say, you know, Miss Puff becoming disabled and she goes mentally insane. I mean, I could honestly see, you know, Mrs. Puff doing this. Although if this were to be a real episode, it would not only be dark, but it would actually be very believable. I mean, the concept of it was actually very believable enough and actually had a great, you know, going for. So this is on the, um, oh yeah, Some Ordinary Gamers Wiki. If you guys want to take a read at it, I suggest you take a read at it if you haven't. It's a pretty good story. So, anyways, with that being the case, that being said, what did you guys personally think of this creepypasta? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload. And as always, roll the outro because I'm out of here. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.